In today's video, we're going to talk about the Fader and Faber tests. These are two special tests or physical tests that doctors use to investigate and prove that you have femoral acetabular impingement. Doctors claim that these two tests will help determine whether or not you have FAI bone shapes like cam, pincer, or mixed morphology. Doctors will claim that positive results on these tests are indicative of your having bad bone shapes that need to be fixed surgically. But once you see what the scientific literature has to say about these tests, you're gonna wanna think twice about the advice you're getting from your doctor. By the end of this video, you're going to understand why I think Fader and Faber are just tests designed to sell you on a surgery you don't need. If you're new here, I'm Matt Shu from Upright Health, and for years I've been helping people beat their hip pain without resorting to things like surgery, injections, or pills. My own severe hip pain problems led me on a path that has helped me get my life back, and I share everything I learn on this journey with other people who have hip pain, as well as shoulder pain, back pain, wrist pain, etc. pain. When I first started making videos about hip pain and hip impingement, I was really hesitant to start calling out some of the things that seem like very suspicious facts. But over the years, as I've dived deeper and deeper into the scientific literature, it's become clear that a lot of what passes for fact in orthopedic surgery is actually just fiction. So today we're gonna focus on the fictions of Fader and Faber. And we're gonna look at the actual scientific literature on these tests so you can understand the real limitations of these tests and you'll understand why these tests are actually totally useless. So first we're gonna start with Fader, which stands for flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. In this test, your doctor or surgeon is gonna pull your leg up towards your chest, bring your leg over the midline, and then create internal rotation of your hip. If this maneuver creates pain in your hip, then doctors and surgeons will claim that this is a positive result, meaning you have hip impingement, or that it's very likely that you have hip impingement. In the orthopedic model of hip impingement, this would mean that an X-ray or MRI would now show that you have cam, pincer, or mixed morphology, meaning your bone shapes in your hip, they're just plain bad, and they need to be shaved down in order to make your result on the fader test better. In other words, if someone does this test on you and it hurts, that's a positive result, and it's likely that you're gonna need surgery to fix your bad bones. Now, of course, any doctor worth his salt is going to want to confirm the findings on an X-ray or MRI to make sure that they see the bad bone shapes that are supposedly called out by the fader test. So if the fader test is actually a good valid test, then if it returns a positive painful result, when you look at the X-rays or MRIs, you should see that you've got the bad bone shapes. This should be a pretty simple correlation and it should be pretty obvious if the fader test is in fact valid and reliable. But what does the research actually say about fader? In 2018, researchers published a paper that looked at hip impingement in 74 ice hockey players. Researchers asked them questions about their hip pain levels, hip function, and their daily lives. They then performed the fader test and then ordered MRIs for every single player so they could compare the results of the fader test and of the MRIs to see just how much correlation there is between your fader test and your MRI. There were also players who did not have the FAI bone shapes and the fader test was only able to identify them 47% of the time. In other words, the fader test was worse than flipping a coin at determining whether you had the bad bone shapes or the good bone shapes. The researchers found absolutely no correlation between the fader test results and what was found on MRI. The only correlation they saw in all their data was that if you had a positive result on the fader test, meaning it was painful, then you probably also had more pain on a daily basis and some reduced levels of hip function. The researchers then noted that it could be possible that the fader test is not showing us anything about what's happening in the hip joint, but might actually be a better screen for showing us that you have hip pain that's caused by things like muscle soreness, muscle contracture, or just plain injury. Now you might be thinking, well, this is only 74 hockey players. Maybe this is a fluke. Are there other studies that might prove that fader has nothing to do with your bone shapes? 
Yes, in fact, there have been other studies that looked at the fader test. In 2013, which was five years before this hockey player study I just mentioned, researchers looked at over 1,100 healthy 19-year-olds and performed the fader test on them and compared the results to x-rays. Researchers found that 7.3% of men and 4.8% of the women had positive results on the fader test. The abstract is also interesting because the researchers claimed that, hey, the fader test does show a correlation to the results of the x-rays. But when you dig a little bit deeper, you find that they're really twisting the truth. The study kept track of cam and pincer bone shapes in the right hips and left hips of all the men and women in the study, and they put all of that in one data table that you can look at if you get the full text of this study. If you look at only the right hips of the men in this study, you'll see that 48% had signs of cam impingement in the right hip. You'll also find that 51% had signs of pincer impingement in their right hip. For women, the numbers are not that different. About 38% of the women had signs of cam impingement and 43% had signs of pincer impingement in the right hip. The numbers for the left hips for the men and women weren't very different. So if you just wanna ballpark it, you can say around 40% of everybody in this study had signs of cam and pincer impingement in their hips. That means roughly half the men had some sign of bad bone shapes and about 40% of the women had signs of bad bone shapes. Now, do you remember the percentage of positive fader tests that I mentioned a few moments ago? For men, it was 7.3% positive and for women, and it was 4.8%. That means the fader test is abysmally bad at identifying FAI bone shapes. It literally misses all of them. There's no correlation. Or if there is a correlation, it's pretty weak, which goes to show that the fader test and your bone shapes probably have nothing to do with each other. Now, before I get into three systematic reviews that did look at fader, I wanna jump into FABER, which is flexion, abduction, and external rotation. This test, just like fader, is supposed to tell you whether or not you have some sort of hip joint deformity or damage. Now to see whether there is concordance between your Faber test results and your bone shapes, we would need to set up a study that's very similar to the ones that they did for fader that we just talked about. We would want to look at a lot of people. Maybe we could shoot for 1100 or 1000 like they did in that 2013 study on fader. Since they obviously have done studies like that on fader, it seems very reasonable to think we should have some evidence like that for faber. It's the fall of 2022 right now and when I search PubMed, I cannot find any research that looked at Faber versus any sort of medical imaging. There is no evidence to support the belief that Faber tells you anything about bone shapes. Now, it's possible that I have just missed the study and I didn't see it in the search results or something like that. So if you are aware of a study that actually looked at Faber versus X-ray or MRI, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, that doesn't mean there's been zero research on Faber. There has been some. In 2010, there was a study published that tried to compare the results of the Faber test against a hip anesthetic injection. Now, to understand this study, you have to understand what doctors tend to believe about hip injections. In the study, they were basically operating under the assumption that if you give somebody an anesthetic hip injection and it relieves their hip pain, it proves that they have something wrong inside their hip joint. And so if you do the injection, you're proving there's a hip joint problem, that means Faber should help you screen for it if in fact Faber works. Now, before we go further, I just wanna point out that this belief about hip injections being a reliable indicator of joint problems is actually based on a whole other set of falsehoods and myths that I'll cover in a different video, but I have covered it in an article that's already available online and I'll link to it in the description box. But let's just assume that this anesthetic hip joint injection does actually give you useful information and that it does prove that you have something wrong inside your hip joint. So when these researchers looked at the Faber test versus the hip anesthetic injection, they found that the Faber test had an extremely high false positive rate. 
which basically means Faber has no evidence to support it. Now you might be saying, oh, you're probably cherry picking. There's gotta be some studies out there about Faber and Fader that show that they actually work. So let's address your very healthy skepticism because I am just a random guy on the internet. First, I wanna point you to a 2012 study, which I will link to in the description box, that looked at all the available evidence on multiple physical tests to prove or disprove hip joint problems. They searched all the available literature for Fader and Faber, and they came to a very unambiguous conclusion. They said, and I quote, little is known about the diagnostic accuracy and validity of these tests, and if available, these figures were low. The quality of studies investigating these tests is too low to provide a conclusive recommendation for the clinician. No physical tests are available that can reliably confirm or discard the diagnoses of FAI and or labral pathology of the hip. In plain English, in 2012, when doctors were already using Fader and Favor as standard practice to screen people for FAI, these tests had no evidence to back them up. A 2016 systematic review found that all the evidence was pretty low quality and their conclusion was the following. There is a strong need for sound research of high methodological quality in this area. In other words, nobody has done any good research that shows that these tests do anything. And finally, in 2020, many, many years after Fader and Faber have already become standard practice and are used on a daily basis to convince people that they need hip surgery, a systematic review said the following. Due to the low specificity of clinical tests, we would not recommend their use to confirm the diagnosis of FAI syndrome. We do not have strong information about the interpretability of these test results, that is, there is too high uncertainty due to low quality evidence and high risk of bias. Therefore, further adequately designed studies in larger populations and with different patient settings are required. Now I wanna take a moment to talk about low specificity, which that 2020 study mentions. Low specificity is a fancy scientific way of saying that there's a really high risk of false positives. The test has a high likelihood of telling you that you've got a positive result when you really shouldn't. And when you dig into the research on these special physical tests for hip impingement or labral tears or hip joint pathology, you will discover that all of these tests have very high false positive rates. This is important to notice because doctors often will claim that if you combine multiple tests, you will have better accuracy. The truth is, if you combine multiple tests that have high false positive rates, you increase the chance that you will get more positive results. So even if you assume that these tests actually tell you anything about hip joint pathology, which I will remind you has not been proven, using multiple tests that have high false positive rates will virtually guarantee a positive result. That means when you have hip pain, doctors are using scientifically invalid tests to prove that you have a hip joint problem using tests that when combined are basically guaranteed to show that you have a hip joint problem. If you and I were gambling and I was using loaded dice, using more loaded dice that fall in my favor doesn't make the results of each roll more fair. It makes each roll less fair to you and more fair to me. In the case of hip impingement surgery, fader and favor are loaded dice. And if you use them, to attempt to rule out FAI, you'll fail. You are far more likely to get a positive result that tells you and your doctor that you need to get surgery. But again, there's no evidence for this. In other words, there are no high quality studies that show that Fader and Faber actually show you anything useful. It's also very important to note that these researchers are not pointing out that there are some studies like the ones we mentioned earlier that actually show tests like Fader are wildly inaccurate. 
There are also many studies that show that the FAI bone shapes have no correlation to hip pain, hip function, or to the development of arthritis in the future. Many large scale studies have shown that people who are fully asymptomatic can have the FAI bone shapes all the way into old age and never develop symptoms. The correlation between the bone shapes and hip pain is simply not there. That's a topic I've discussed in other videos and I have some articles about that that I'm gonna to link to down below. If all of this has made you start to second guess the validity of the fader and favor tests, then I'm glad. Now, if you are a physical therapist or a sports medicine doctor who is hearing all this evidence for the first time, I strongly encourage you to go dig through PubMed and see what you find. If you find any strong evidence that is of high quality that shows that these tests actually work, I would love to see it and I would love for you to put it in the comment section down below. And if you are somebody who is suffering with hip pain and you are starting to question whether FAI as a diagnosis makes much sense and whether surgery makes much sense for you, I encourage you to dig deeper and go to the FAIfix.com. We have some more resources there for you to read and engage with. And if you then feel ready to take things into your own hands and try to address the muscles that are underlying your hip issues, then there is a do-it-yourself program available for you there with a money-back guarantee. I also have plenty of free videos that dive deeper into hip impingement and FAI, and I encourage you to check out those videos here. If you wanna support this channel, you can use the join or thanks button down below or use the Patreon and PayPal links you'll find in the description box. I'm Matt Chu from Upright Health, reminding you that pain sucks, life shouldn't.